Hi, good day everyone. So we are now on lesson two entitled Travel Management Company. In this lesson, we're going to discuss the various organization issues faced by this travel management company. And again, travel management company is um, mainly uh, we're referring to the travel agency as the retailer and the tour operator as the wholesaler. So basically, we have these two types of business, which is could be described as a travel management company. Now, we we're going to have a particular emphasis for the travel agency in this lesson because they're more easy to be discussed and more or has a uh, simple organization structure compared with the tour operation. Okay, so now um, this lesson also will going to equip you on the internal workings of a travel agency and of course some relevant organizational issues that they are facing right now so we're going to relate the issues here as well as with uh, the ongoing pandemic that we are quite experiencing okay so now let's proceed so just like uh, my other lesson, it, this lesson we're going to be divided in part one and part two. So for part one, we're going to discuss the following important aspects or important issues. First is the business model of the travel agency and the tour operator. So it is very important for us to really understand or, has a, or have a working knowledge on how does this company earn its money or how does they plan to work for their money or get, Basically, it boils down with the context of each business exists for the main purpose of uh, obtaining profit for its owner, diba? So, kahit sabihin mo siyang it's a non-profit organization, I do believe so that they have to earn profit to make their uh, organization in long-term view as a sustainable or financially viable one. Kasi pag hindi sila nag incur ng profit, puro loss lang, di ba? Parang it also, they are more reliant on the donations and, of course, outside funding, which makes their organizational, uh, organizational efforts or their organization mismo uh, limited on their capacity to help or to, to, meet, their, to meet their goals or the, meet their endeavors, right? So basically, that is important as well for a non-government organization or non-profit organization. Now, for profit organization like travel agency and tour operation, so it is vital diba, to have profit. And first, of course, if you're going to become an entrepreneur someday or an investor, the major uh, question that you, of course, you would need to answer and ask yourself is, how does this business earn money, di ba? Kung hindi mo kasi masagot siya, perhaps you are not engaging with a legitimate business. Perhaps that is a scam. So basically, this question will separate those business that are profitable and, of course, those business either a scam or they're not so conceived to become profitable. Next, of course, if you have identified your business model, you have to identify the source of your revenue. Of course, we have multi, uh, multi level of streams, no? Tinatawag natin, uh, multi level of st revenue streams. So, mags maraming revenue streams, mas okay siya. So, I will identify the common sources of the revenue for the travel agency business. And lastly, but not the least, of course, we have to identify the function of the travel agency. Now, we do have many functions uh, according to literature, but I have summarized that into five major functions. Para ano na lang siya, mas simple siya, and of course, it, we could easily discuss them in this uh, with, with the limited time. Okay, so let's proceed. So... For the first issue is business model. So when you say business model, some sort is related or associated with the Latin term modus operandi or mode of operation. So business model is actually a very simple concept which actually asks you how does the company earn or how does the company plans for making profit or how does the company earn profit. So basically, yan lang yung tanong niya, no? So ngayon, that the company should be able to identify the products and services which it, it plans to sell, identifies its target marketing, and of course, identify uh, expenses or expenditures. So these are all in relation in um, uh, of identifying the main profitability equation natin. No? So ano ba main profitability equation natin? Of course, syempre, you have revenue, 
less cost equals profit. Diba? Ganyan siya. So, how would you obtain revenue or sales? How would you reduce cost of your operation? So, ganun lang naman siya. Eh, no? So, that is our business model. Now, a business model could be discussed in a very simple way like that. Or, let's have an example para mas madali natin maintindihan. Okay, I will going to have uh, some examples of business model uh, in the general business sense, and I'm going to relate that into the travel management uh, industry. Okay, so the first one is what we, have, what we what we have the subscription model. Subscription model refers to yung mga ginagamit po natin with PLDT, Globe, or Netflix. So these are a subscription model because they are uh, paying the subscription fee for this utility company or for these entertainment companies. So a subscription model is a very powerful business model because their cash flow or their continuous um, profitability is ensure because each customer has a lock in uh, contract no so may mga lock in contract siya so for example if you're uh, subscriptor uh, subs nagsusubscribe ka with globe mahirap na siyang palitan dahil if you have this contract with them let's say postpaid card uh, postpaid user ka so syempre you have this uh, terms and conditions which are all subject for litigation pag di mo uh, hindi ka nakabayad or hindi ka tumupad sa contract so that's the lock in no? so for PLDT rin naman of course syempre ilan lang teleco sa Philippines so if you're located in an area which is PLDT na nag-exist wala siya ng choice kundi mag-subscribe sa'yo so that's that's how they working no? and also the power of the network the network power is also important. So, dyan mo mapapansin kung malakas talaga ang kanilang network o maraming subscriber, mas okay yon. So, so, kung mas malakas ang kanilang network or mas maraming subscriber, ang tendency niya is also to gravitate towards a larger network. No? So, you won't uh, have, uh, kaya that's the reason why it's hard to put a teleco or a telephone company or internet company in the Philippines because if you're just starting, the tendency of the people is not to really look forward for your uh, for your business because they are more gravitated to a well-known brand, a well-established brand because of the technical feasibility. Of course, syempre, mas marami siyang line, mas marami siyang access, mas marami siyang lo location that they could serve. So that could be a one major factor for the decision of the consumer to purchase or to subscribe on your business. Okay. So now, relating that subscription model in a travel industry context, we have these businesses that operates in a similar fashion. So we have uh, what they call the global distribution systems. So we have a, actually, it's these IT companies are limited in a sense because in the Philippines, we have only three global distribution system that operates. We have the Saber, we have the Amadeus, and we have the Galileo, so our travel port. Okay, so these are the GDS system. They are the what we call the the lines or the pipeline which the travel agency operates, issues their ticket and book the reservation for their guests or their client. These are the main pipeline between the travel agent and the airline company. So they are the bridge between these two guys. Of course, without them, there is no transaction between the travel agency and the airline. So now, what are we going to do? They operate in a subscription model. So if, for example, I'm a travel agent, I own a travel agency, I'm going to subscribe for a system. So my subscription pays up every month that I need to pay. Okay. For the airline, there is a subscription fee because they are earning a commission for every ticketed segments or every ticketed um. Um, reservations that they are, of course, if they issue these tickets to a uh, saber, there will be a percentage points or there would be a enumerate um, consequence dollars that they're going to charge with the respective carriers. So, ganun siya. So, meron siyang, uh, kumbaga sa ano, meron siyang cut for every ticketed segments ng na-issue ng travel agent dun sa platform nila or sa system nila. So, that's how, uh, that's how Galileo Amadeus operates, no? Now, next is we have the franchise model. So, of course, the franchise model is quite famous for its uh, no, no, increased chances of success. 
Why? Because its franchise model is a very booming business in the Philippines because they perceive it as a win-win solution. Bakit win-win solution? It's a win for those who would want to purchase a business or would want to establish a business because they're, uh, in step one, kasi natin, they have to think of the business concept, they have to think for the location, they have to think for the feasibility, etc., etc. Now, if you basically apply for a franchise, you're skipping the step one process to step two na. So basically, you are now thinking the sino ang i-hire mo or sino, kanino, anong mga klaseng tao siya or human resources and those issues. No? Rather than concentrate on the uh, what we call the business development process. So na-skip mo na siya. So it's a win for the entrepreneur because I don't have to do step one. And of course, the chances of success, franchise business, of course, these are businesses that are already proven themselves. So uh, chances, they have brand recognition, they have well-established um, productivity lines, they have a well-established um, operation um, efficiency. So these are all inherited to their system that they're going to franchise. Okay, so ganun siya. So ngayon, dun naman sa nagpapa-franchise, it's also a win-win solution because number one, they're not only selling their let's say Jollibee, they're not only selling burgers, they're not only selling chicken, they're selling the business as a whole. Or okay. a, a whole because they are selling the license, the name, the brand name of the product. But you retain, still retain the ownership. No? You still retain the, the ownership of this brand name. But you're just sharing it with other, uh, with, the, with the entrepreneurs na gusto magkaroon ng kanilang branch ng Jollibee. Now, of course, that will have a positive gain for you because the daming branches mo without spending a capital or a cent, di ba? Wala kang gasos doon, the daming branches mo. In the same sense, syempre, you are going to be paid royalty and subscription or what we call franchise fee. So may franchise fee, royalties, and other fees that you can charge to yung mga entrepreneur na gusto mag-franchise ng Jollibee. So, ganun din siya. No? It's a win-win solution. It's a win-win solution for those who would want to franchise and it's a win solution for those who are franchising. So, so ganun siya. No? So, ngayon, it's effective in this uh, food industry. Now, relating that to travel industry, we have uh, similar brands. Uh, they are very famous travel agency abroad or they have this very powerful brand recognitions na pwede natin i-exploit. Let's say uh, you are um, Contiki. Contiki is well known for its uh, tour package that are appealing with uh, youth, youth program. So I know uh, some travel agency or uh, one travel agency in Manila or in particularly in Manila that, uh, that owns or has the license to use Contiki brand. So sila lang yung may license for the Contiki brand. So they could assume or they could be uh, acting like a Contiki where in fact they're uh, franchise lang sila or uh, some sort of general selling agent agreement. Ganun. So ganun ang kanilang relationship. Now, uh, we also have other brands na, for example, one of the oldest, most famous, uh, yun nga lang syempre, nag-collapse kasi last year. Si Thomas Cook. So Thomas Cook was an industry pioneer siya, no? So if I could um, franchise the model of Thomas Cook, so mas establish yung name niya, so mas kilala ng mga tao, of course, mas famous siya. Mas marami ang kliyente because her brand is is more recognized. But of course, this franchise model is not ideal in the Philippines kasi we're not so uh, brand sensitive when it comes with travel agency and tour operators, no? But in abroad, that, that could gain you an advantage uh, the difference between a gray, gray line operator than a local co operator is very distinct. Uh, na di, na di distinct siya in terms ng um, market abroad. Kasi they are yung mga tao doon, particularly Europe, Euro, European, they are much more brand sensitive. So they are, um, mas gusto nila ensures, uh, assure sila ng quality. And of course, these brands are well established in Europe and America. So, no surprise, they will gravitate towards the, this brand, though they are going to pay premium. So, may, mas mahal kasi ang bayad talaga. So, you, you need to pay the franchise. And of course, you're going to charge that to your client. And of course, your client, diba, much, much more willing sila magbayad ng mas mahal kasi there is a brand. There is a branding of your travel agency business. 
Now again, the Philippines, uh, hindi siya masya, uh, for me, personally, I observe, hindi naman siya ganun, ka, um, Pilipino kasi, Filipino uh, travel agents or yung travel agent goers or yung mga kliyente natin, hindi naman sila ganun ka-brand uh, sensitive. But they are, uh, yun nga, they're not brand sensitive in a way, but they are brand loyal. So pag na-establish mo na relationship with your client, they will go with you. Talagang they they stick around with you because they you have established um yun nga, some sort of brand loyalty with your client. So ganun siya. No? They are not sensitive about your brand. They are more brand loyal. And of course, most client are uh, start ng business natin is based on my experience, most of the client was referred or you have an ish, initial contact. Let's say, ikaw yung nag-arrange na ka nilang corporate program or nag-arrange na incentive trip na nag, natuwa naman sila. So, sa'yo lumalapit. So, that's how this business, uh, parang siyang ano, word of mouth talaga eh, or prior experience. So, ganun yung working niya. Now, for a, yeah, that, now, let's go for the three, brokerage model. So, brokerage model now refers now to our business setup. So, this is the business setup that we use in travel agency interoperator. So, bakit? So, we are the broker. When you say broker, we are the... Okay. Brokerage refers to the business of contact or connect, connecting the buyers and sellers and help facilitate the transaction. So, when we say brokerage, we're breaking the barrier. So, broke the barrier. Okay. Barrier of ano? Buyer, barrier of setting up the transaction. So normally, what are, what are the common barriers of setting or business buyer when we're dealing with transactions? Okay, the common barrier, of course, time, information, and of course, physical location, of course, know-how. So these are the barriers. No? So of course, that is very obvious when you go back to, the, or if you trace the history of travel agency, that's why, what's the reason why travel agency boomed during 70s, 80s, and 90s? No? So bakit ba nag nag-boom ang travel agency business because it's hard to connect with the airline. There are limited number of lines, of PLDT lines during 80s and 70s. So 70s, 80s, there are limited um, lines. Of course, hindi lahat ng households sa Philippines has this uh, opportunity to have a telephone line. More so, syempre, wala pang cellphone noon. So, you need to, of course, contact PLDT, wait for a while, and then uh, wait for the lineman to come in and then arrange the line. Of course, that that is so much hassle. If you want to to, to travel, of course, hindi mo, eh, wala ka nga line. Paano ka makakapag-purchase ng ticket, di ba? So, ganun siya. Ganun ka-importante yung line noon. Ngayon, uh, of course, because of the modern technology, that problem was resolved. We have now the cell phone. We have now the internet, so we have now the data, the technology, the 4G, the even now going to 5G. So it's, it, it's basically revo revolutionized or democratized the technology. So the barrier for information, for the ability to connect was already reduced. So ganun siya, no? So we are now living in a period in where we are much more connected. Yeah. So this is a blessing because we can now connect directly with the airline. So, of course, that raised the question, importante pa ba ang travel agency? So, later, we will uh, going to discuss the relevancy or the importance or the significance of travel agency in our modern uh, society. So, next. Uh, they are con uh, of course, if you're the travel agency, you are connecting both the passenger and the airline. So you are representing the airline to the passenger and you are representing the passenger to the airline and vice versa. Because you are the go-between, you are the broker, you are the middleman, so you facilitate their transaction. Of course, the airline will deal with you because you know what you're doing for travel business basically. So, ang airline, mas better makipag-deal sa'yo. Now, the passenger is mas uh, entrusting you the travel arrangement because you know what you're... Basically, yung power or basically yung authority ng travel agency comes from their knowledge and their expertise. No, So, it's parang basically ano ka rin dyan, uh, a consultant ka rin in a way that you're giving advice. Kaya ang, ang other name for or other job title that we use for travel agency, wala naman kasi gumagamit ng travel agent eh. 
ang other ang talagang job title niya is travel counselor because you're basically uh, giving counsel or you're advising the passenger so ganun siya travel counselor so that's the common uh, job title that we use in the travel agency business okay now of course uh, we charge or the agency charge for a fee for both the buyer and the seller or sometimes uh, buyer lang or seller lang or it's up to the mechanics of the travel agency and how to do that okay later explain ko siya next now let's discuss the relevancy of the travel agency no so travel agency their value is derived from facilitating the transaction of at convenience of the traveler so if the transaction is again the magic word here is convenience if the transaction is no longer convenient because you can now access your uh, air reservation system using your mobile you can book your own ticket using your mobile so what's the sense or what's the what's 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 the relevancy of of having a travel agency do it for you so parang irrelevant na siya, no? it's not important so, for example, uh, right now, if you're going to fly Hong Kong, would you consult a travel agency? Of course, the tendency, most of us, that's 95%, won't go or won't bother to consult a travel agency because, but pa ako magkakonsult kasi bibilian lang man ang ticket, di ba? So, I can, I can line with Philippine Airlines uh, outlet or I could simply check my cell phone and then access the website ng airline then uh, presto do the reservation and then just pay it by a uh, gcash or uh, credit card so that's how uh, things are going on with the travel business so uh, in the latter setup travel agent is so powerful because they are the, uh, the focal point of communication so basically just imagine no so wala ka access sa mga we, cur we currently enjoyed uh, travel services online. Wala ka access chan. So just imagine there is no travel agency that uh, uh, nag exist online and there is no airline website that they are capable of doing the booking for you or your, uh, the, the cell phone has no apps for booking. No? So basically, you need to go with a travel agent because that's the they are now the important key point. But because of technology, hmm, technology, yeah, because of technology, the your cell phone displays now. That is what we call this intermediation. So intermediation connect. This intermediation uh, refers to the uh, act of. Of removing the intermediation or removing the mediation or the middleman. So we are removing now the middleman because of technology. Technology has increased the access to travel information that are often mo monopolized by travel agents. So these are informations are vital for you. Kasi nga, diba, knowledge is power. So if you don't have knowledge, you cannot act, you cannot decide. So now you have all the knowledge required for you to act or to have your travel. Okay? That's the reason why uh, we have the rise of the do-it-yourself tours, do-it-yourself uh movement no even though uh, kahit yung cooking kahit yung construction do it yourself so sige kasi the information is uh, very accessible it's, it's basically um, the, the presentation of this information if you check the youtube it's uh, very much more digestible in uh, the, the way they present the information to the general public so madali siya now um what's so we have this. So, bakit pa ba natin kailangan? Or what's the importance of travel agency? Uh, I think uh, travel agency do exist for a reason. And this reason is, number one, there are some clients that are still not keeping up with technology. Of course, we have our senior citizen. We have those te technologically handicapped persons. We have this uh, group of people who prefer not to use or they, they, they would want to have a simple life that are not so com IT complicated. So these are the people that are being served right now by the travel agency. And second, of course, there are some people Besides the those category that I did mention, the second one is there is a group of people who are 
who prefers to book or has have somebody who will be doing the dirty work for them or the nitty gritty of the travel services or the, their travel needs. So these are people who are of of course affluent people, busy person, corporate uh, leaders, uh, of course organizational buyers. They would they don't want to be engaged with the nitty gritty of this travel business. No? So sayang kasi sa pera sa kasapanon. If they could do much a better deal or they could do business deal using their their time so mas okay yon rather than to spend their time working with their itineraries no have somebody to do it for you so ganun na lang so mas better siya so in that sense travel agency exists because of this primary group 1 and group 2 okay so okay so ngayon uh, tour operator on the other hand i think in my personal observation and deduction Tour operator will exist, continue to exist despite this technological revolution. Bakit? Because tour operator is unique, it is uh, positioned in a unique way or very strategic way. Siya. Why? Tour operator is considered as the wholesaler of the travel industry because they create value by combining different travel services into a multi or a super product that what we call as tour package. Bakit? They're just basically, they are the assembler. You know? So they are assembling this individually unique tour package or tour pa product rather, sorry, into a package. For example, if you buy air tickets, so the value of air tickets is less compared with a total tour package. Okay, If you buy a hotel reservation, that's the value is, of course, there is a value, but it is less compared with the value of a com complete tour package. So that is why there are uh, the tour operator business will continue to strive and, of course, continue to grow, even though we are changing the setup and the um, technological forces are coming in. So, of course, they will survive. Okay. So, what's the difference of a wholesaler and a retailer? So, that is now the, the obvious difference of a tour operator and a travel agent. So, a travel agent refer, is referred as a retailer and tour operator is referred as a wholesaler. So, let's have an analogy. Okay. So, my analogy is, for example, you are would want to purchase or gusto mo uminom ng Coke, isang 1.5 Coke. Are you going to visit the dealership or the the whole or the dealership of this Coke just to buy 1.5 liter ng bot ng Coke? Of course not, diba? You won't spend money, you won't spend effort and time to locate this dealer, no? mga dealer ng uh, kasi isang bottle na bibili mo. What's the tendency for you? Of course, the practical way for you is to go to the Sari Sari store and or go to 7-Eleven or Alpha Marks. So that will be your retailer. So in a sense, that is the how travel agency operates. No? So you won't buy, or basically, since travel agency are marami, or they are plentiful, compared, and they are accessible, much more accessible generally compared with the, the wholesaler. So your business is probably course with travel agency rather than tour operator kasi mas they accessible sila mas they they have more time to deal with you compared with the tour operator has uh, of course busy sila they're not only dealing with you they're dealing with different organization and travel agency as well so yes yeah, si, si tour operator naman just like my analogy kung bibili ka ng uh, let's say 10 case ng 1.5 coke it's much more better to go with the dealer. Why? Because the Sari Sari store and their 7-Eleven won't be able to produce this uh, number of cooks or quantity of cooks. No? So, ganun siya. So, in similar fashion, if you're going to to purchase in bulk, mas better sa tour operator. So, how would you know if it's a tour operator or travel agency? Nakalagay po sa pangala. Pag nakalagay is travel and tour, yan. So, and also, if you check the PTA handbook, so may mga, so PTA handbook or the PTA website, nakalagay doon yung mga services nila. Okay. So, ngayon, si tour operator din, nagbebenta rin siya sa travel agent kasi travel agency is a major supply or pipeline. No? So, they are also working hand, hand win, uh, hand, Nabubulol ako. Hand by hand, yan. Hand by hand. Or they're working um, travel for uh, uh, with in partnership with the travel agency. No? So, bakit? Kasi they don't have enough staff to cater all of the um, this potential client. And of course, 
they're just giving the commission para si si travel agent as ikasuin yung kanya or ibenta yung tour package nila. And of course, syempre, they don't, that's the beauty of this model. Uh, they are not going to employ uh, a bunch of people just to sell this uh, tour package. They are basically giving commission for this travel agent to sell their tour package. So parang ano siya, it's a win-win solution. Tour operator does not um, add additional cost by employing more people. And of course, a travel agency add more value or more uh, revenue stream to their business by selling these store packages. Yeah. So that's the mutual relationship of the two. So ngayon, you can both exist as a travel agent or a tour operator. Kasi if you're, uh, and of course, if you're a large travel agency in the in, in this Man in Manila or in the Philippines, you can also in incorporate or you can also have the tour operator business besides your uh, existing business na travel agent. Anyway, the the license, your business license does not distinguish travel agency and tour operation. Actually, it's uh, assume kasi parang ano na siya, isang lisensya lang siya, wala siyang distinction talaga. Okay? So that, hopefully that clears the matter for you. Okay, next. Now, this one is the most important. How do, how do travel agency earn or what are the sources of uh, revenue for travel agent? Now, we have these uh, five major sources of revenue and we're going to explain it to you one by one. So first is service, service fee. What? So service fee is basically what we charge on top of the value of the ticket. For example, I issue a ticket worth 10000 and I charge the passenger $100 for the service fee. So... So, ganun lang siya, no? Sir, but ganun, uh, syempre, tendency ng mga Pilipino, ayaw na magbayad ng service fee, di ba? So, that's common, no? Now, this system or this uh, scenario works if, ito yung isang uh, maganda model ng isa sa na-observe ko is, pag may Cebu Pacific outlet or, or Philippine or airline outlet. So normally, ano na observe natin, despite the technology and everything, the accessibility of the airline web, airline website to mobile phone or their, to their PC, still yung pila po sa Cebu Pacific and uh, PAL, hindi po maubos-ubos, di ba? Sa ticketing offices nila, ang dami pa rin nakapila. For some reason, no, kahit uh, digital na tayo, nakapila pa rin sila. Ngayon lang pandemic, naubos ang tao kasi, of course, wala nang travel, di ba? Pero uh, in 2019, talagang daming pumipili sa Cebu Pacific. Yung tataka ka, but wala bang internet? Wala bang technology? But this, okay, so that's ano. Now, uh, I know some travel agency that are locating their businesses besides this ticket outlet ng Cebu Pacific and Philippine Airlines. Bakit? Kasi uh, si Cebu Pacific, daming tao. May mga mabubwisit dyan, may maiinis. So, ang tendency nila is to look for a better ano, better deal or uh, of course uh, they would want to purchase a ticket kasi better na talaga siya mura pero uh, ayaw na nila maghintay or medyo nainip sila so ngayon diyan papasok ngayon ang travel agency you can have the same price but of course we will charge you a convenience fee so another term for service fee is convenience fee because you are na convenient ka or mas better sa iyo na wag na pumila. So that's the beauty of that. So itong travel agency nito, every outlet ni Cebu Pacific, nagtatayo siya ng outlet niya kasi nga yung ibang tao pumupunta sa kanya instead na pumila doon sa Cebu Pacific and where they can earn service fee. Okay? So next, markup. So markup is basically what we call the industry as MU. So pag nangari na kayo ng MU na sinasabi ng agent, alam nyo na, markup yon. Hindi po siya yung laro, okay? Or hindi po siya yung mutual understanding, okay? So when you say markup, uh, let's say um, the net gross fare po ng tour, let's say the tour only cost for around $1,000, no? $1,000 and their markup is around $20. So magpapatong lang sa'yo ng $20 doon. So and they're going to sell that for $1,020 sa passenger or $1,020 or $1,020 for the passenger. So that's markup basically. 
Okay, now, next rebates, I did explain that in lesson one. So, we have rebates. So, rebates is in the form of, of what we call FOCs. No? So, sometimes because you purchase a box services, let's say uh, for the power, for the purpose, then if you are the tour operator, your power is uh, when you purchase vast quantity of of rooms, air ticket, you have this leverage no, to haggle for the price and also to get rebates. No? So that's uh, that makes the difference between a man purchasing a standard room, one standard room, to a man purchasing or to a tour operator purchasing 100 standard or 100 standard rooms. No? So lucky the difference. Of course, the was the was a better power to haggle? Of course, the man or the tour operator because they could... Uh, dictate the price because they have the volume they have the the economy of scale so they could um, influence the pricing decision of the businesses okay so the, in that way uh, the tour operator could also haggle for the price they could squeeze in they could better negotiate for the price in turn this price or discounts that they got will be translated into competitive prices or most competitive yung tour package niya, rather than to buy it individually or buy it on your own. So you'll get much more better deal if you are uh, working with or if you are purchasing your travel service with the tour operator because they could haggle the prices for you because they have the volume. So they are basically sharing this discount to their client through of course, you need to purchase the tour packages that they are offering. Hindi ka pwedeng, ay, ito lang po gusto ko room. Ah, Siyempre, hindi pwedeng ganun. So, wala, wala silang masyadong discount na ibibigay sa'yo because gusto mo lang room. Okay, you have to purchase the whole package for you to have the advantage of the discount. Okay. So, for rebates, ganun din siya. Uh, let's say you're a tour operator, you're purchasing 30 rooms. No? So, of course, meron kang isang FOC. So, one FOC would, uh, you can either sell it or you can either give it to your passenger. So, whatever is your, it's up to the discretion of your, of your company. Next, we have this what we call short-term interest. So, short-term interest refers to those advance payment or yung mga payment for deposits. No? Kasi, in travel business, alam nyo naman, mabilis magbago isip ng kliyente natin. So, na pag sinabi mong deposit or guarantee deposit, they are sure to come because they are already uh, has this commitment. Not proven, uh, hindi lang siya proven by their words, but also by their money. Sabi nga, di ba, may kasabihan tayo, uh, put your money where your mouth is, di ba? Sabi nga, di ba? So, kung gusto mo, yes, adi, sir, deposit ka. So, that's the short-term interest here is when the travel agency um, uh, have that money or advance payment, it, some sort of a forex trading, or let's say they just basically place that in a, a limited 30 days uh, guarantee notes or mga, what we call yung mga money market. No? So Now, of course, not all travel agency has the, this kind of luxury or this kind of revenue stream limited lang siya because, of course, you need uh, to have a stable cash flow and, uh, of course, um, kailangan may perang pumapasok. Kasi kung wala naman perang pumapasok araw-araw, ano yung issue short term mo, di ba? If you're starting business or starting travel agency ka, mukhang hindi siya, hindi siya para sa'yo kasi issue, issue yan with cash flows. No? Next, of course, we have this ever-famous commission. So commission is basically the difference between a published fare and a, pub, a private or net fare. So we have the published or also called as gross fare and we have the private slash net fare. So this is the difference. No? So I'll explain it to you. Okay. So for the commission, so the commission, okay, so let's say commission or publish, okay. So publish or gross fare are those fares that are indicated to the marketing campaign of the airline. Let's say they are best represented in your tickets. They're the fare or the price that are represented to their marketing uh, efforts, to their website, to their uh, commercials. For example, it's uh, 402 by a Jetstar. Ngayon, kung 402 siya, uh, pagbibili na passenger siya sa Jetstar, that's 402. Ngayon, pagbibili mo ba siya as travel agent ka Jetstar, 402? Parang hindi, no? Kasi bakit ko ibebenta ang Jetstar kung wala akong pakinabang? Of course, that will ask, ask di ba? Parang it begs the question, why? Bakit may ibebenta yung Jetstar? Di ba? Anong pakinabang mo dyan? Eh, di wala. Wala akong pakinabang. 
So, ba't ko bebenta, di ba? So, of course, if wala kang pakinabang, the, the tendency of the travel agents is not to sell Jetstar anymore because there is no incentive to do so. Nevertheless, they could charge yung tinatawag nating service fee or convenience fee. But of course, uh, eh, hindi ka malapit dun sa outlet ng Jetstar to justify your convenience fee or uh, the passenger opted or you, you you notice that most of your passenger are deter when they heard service fee pag narinig na nila yung service fee parang ayaw na nilang mag ano mag purchase sayo no kasi parang bakit ako mag service fee eh itong sa isang travel agency walang service fee di ba so that's the ano so ngayon, uh, how to do that? The industry practice is to give a co- commission or percentage with the travel agency. Now, the 402 is not really the amount or the amount that they're going to pay as a travel agent. So let's say uh, this airline will give hypothetically 10%. So meron kang discount na $40 kasi 10% commission. Laki, no? Kunwari lang, kunwari. For purpose of uh, of illustration. So, 402 less $40, which is your commission, equals to, tan-tan-tan, of course, you, you get $40, okay? So, uh, and then the amount is remitted, uh, the remaining amount is remitted to the airline. So, ganun siya. So, ngayon, ikaw, travel agency ka na, gaganaan ka na magbenta ng Jetstar, okay? So, bakit? Kasi meron ka ng $40, and of course, the rest of the the value of that for, uh of the ticket, let's say, ano na siya, no, 360 or 362, $362 will go with the Jetstar. Okay. So, ganun siya, no. Ikaw may pakinabang si Jetstar, may pakinabang din sa'yo because they won't assist, they won't pay you for assisting your client. They won't uh, pay your salary. They won't uh, have this trouble or this inconvenient of dealing with the with the nitty-gritty of your client requirements. And of course, they will hire less people for doing the you know, customer service component. So basically, outsource siya. So in then, advantage na siya sa airline. Okay? So that's... Now, uh, of course, you cannot access this. Sabihin mo, agent ako eh. Sige, dahil lahat tayo mag-print na lang ng ID natin. Let's say, you print your own business card and then you license with the DTI and then everything. So... Travel agent ka na, okay. Congratulations, okay. Hindi po ganun din kadali to have a commission or to earn commission sa earlings. So, may proseso po yan. Hindi po ganun kadali. Number one, kailangan mo po maging ayata. Ayata agent po mo, only the ayata agent are capable or have this opportunity or the benefits of having commission using yung kanilang Ayata BSP ticketing plate no. So kung hindi ka ayata, you need to look for an ayata agent para maging doon ka magpapa-issue ng ticket for you to be able to access the private or net fares of these airlines. So there are some airlines who give a commission for non ayata or kahit sino travel agent pero limited lang po yung scope niya. For example, pal, you can deal with pal pero it's more of domestic no. So they sometimes if you're purchasing more, let's say by bulk, they give certain commission for you. But of course, you need uh, it's only limited for the domestic. So you need to get the Ayata accreditation first to be able to enjoy the full benefit of being a travel agent. While, syempre, uh, the issue the issuance of ticket is, of course, through your major GDS. No? So ganun siya. Sabre, Galileo, and Amadeus. Ganun ang proseso natin. So hindi siya porket uh, travel agent ka na are entitled for that. No, hindi po. So, hindi po porket uh, nagpalisensya ka na. Madali kasi gumawa ng DTI. Eh. Palisensya ka, gawa ka ng calling card mo, ID, ID ka, the agent ka na. Kada punta mo sa airline, kahit mga kapamilya mo lang naman yun, kahit ikaw, gusto mo maka-discount. O, ba So, hindi po ganun. Uh, ang proseso po is, wala kang ilusot pa rin dito. You need to have an ayata ayata accreditation number or license before you be able to access the private or net fare of this airline kung wala naman that's the need uh, you you need to go with the ayata if you're an ayata travel agent ka go ka kay ayata para makapagpa-issue ka ng ticket okay now if uh, the in ticket naman is uh, basically hindi naman siya true BSP or ayata you can issue that using your credit card use, using your GCash to the website or airline website or you can go to their outlet para magpa-issue ng ticket. So, ganun siya. 
So, okay. Now, let's go with the functions of your travel agent. So, functions siya, no? The first two is basically outsource na natin siya. Wala, wala namang kwenta to, first two. Kasi, they're basically, you can, your client could do that. And, of course, uh, madali naman siyang gawin, eh. If, uh, katuloy recommend destinations and travel services. Minsan pa nga, alam na ng kliyente kung saan siya pupunta. Or mas marami siya alam kaysa sa atin doon sa lugar na yun. So, parang yung first two, wala tayong competitive advantage yan. But, for the latter three, aid in securing travel documentation, process travel arrangement, assist in case of refund. Dito talaga pumapasok yung heart ng travel agency business. Okay. So, let's have a, okay, let's have, the first one is the aid of securing documentations or particularly visas, no? Okay. So, passport, madali siya kasi you can, I can go directly with DFA. Pero for visa, uh, if that's a US visa or European visa, you can go sa embassy mismo. Diretso ka na rin. Now, of course, uh, of course, that will maintain te the technicalities and rigors of visa application, no? Uh, kadalasan kaya yung mga first time uh, travelers natin na deny because their paper are not properly uh, prepared. So in that sense, their travel agent could be uh, of a great help to you. They will know how to prepare your paper. They will know how to present or to fill in the data. They will advise you on what to do, what to pre what to present, or what uh, what are the possible uh, uh, preparatory documents that you could present when these are when there are these are some questions that might arise during your interview so that in that sense that your chances of uh, getting a visa is much more higher than preparing it on your own so ganun po eh so kaya po kung first time visa applicants kaya for those you know yung mga visas natin mataas ang denial rate for example US uh, much better kung if you can secure for a uh, much better if you could ask for the help of a travel agent kasi mas increase yung chance nyo. Pero pwede naman kayo diretso din. Of course, take the risk. Diba? Risk taking kasi siya eh. Now, um, that's the... Siguro, kaya yung iba rin kliyente ng travel agency, hindi rin sila basta-basta umaalis sa kanilang travel agency because of the visa. They know that their passport is safe with the travel agent. Kasi nga, baka mamaya yung passport nila kung sa mapunta. You know, saka nga, mas tiwala sila dun sa expertise ng travel agent because they have been uh, true rain and shine, di ba? So, parang ang tagal na nila kasama. Believe na sila. Okay. So, that this one is a major important uh, reason why travel agency do survive. Okay. Next. Okay. Ito yung pinaka-heart natin. Process travel arrangement. So, if you're booking for a simple air ticket, point-to-point -point lang siya. One way or round trip. So, uh, these are destinations, uh, non-visa destinations, so you can do it on your own. So, wala na tayong problema doon. Madali na ka, madali, madaling gawin. So, basically, but kailangan mo pa ng travel agent? Now, the problem now arises if your destinations are multi-city or multi-city siya, multi-city destinations. Of, or, or if it involves yung mga US destinations, mga European destinations natin na nagre-require ng visa. So, in that sense, Mas more better po tayong uh, kung yung ating travel services is via travel agent kasi they know what they're doing. They are trained to do professionally and of course, they are, of course, in some sort of they are parang almost increasing your chance to, to have your visa approved in a way. Now, uh, other services that provides by travel agencies, we have this uh, special service request. If you want wheelchairs, we can assist you. If you want, okay. Now, could I uh, bring oxygen tank? Let's say, let's say, meron kang problema sa baga mo and you cannot leave, but you need to travel, you need to see a doctor abroad, may oxygen tank kang kasama. So, paano mo gagawin yun? If you're, you're on your own, mahirap siyang gawin, di ba? So, paano, ka, paano may oxygen tank? Diba? Pwede ba sa online yun? O, sige, bubuko yung sarili ko tapos may oxygen tank. Diba? Hirap nun. Of course, if you have that kind of special service request, such as oxygen tank, diba? or kailangan mo ng wheelchair aboard, 
or kailangan mo ng stretcher. So, these are things na pwede mangyari dahil importante talaga makapag-travel ka abroad. Pero, of course, you need someone to facilitate that for you. So, kailangan mo ng travel agent in that sense. Kasi, mahirap gawin yung request mo. Hindi mo kaya siyang gawin sa online. Okay? Of course, travel documentation, insurance, and of course, refund. For the refund, ito po importante. Ngayon po, usong-usong ngayon yan sa atin. Okay. So, refund, uh, assisting in case of refund, of course, ito po yung gagawin ng travel agent. Um, so, first, uh, the client will ask for a refund. So, ikaw, paprocess mo yung refund, mo, uh, refund ng kliyente. Kasi nga, kung hindi naman siya sa'yo nagpa-ticket, Oh, wala tayong pinag-uusapan ang refund-refund mo kasi hindi ka dito nagbayad so doon ka mag magpa-refund doon sa pinagbayaran mo which is happens to be the airline eh alam naman natin ang hirap ang hirap mag-refund pag airline no? so you have to wait now sa travel agency rin ganun din you have to wait pero may convenience siya because alam mo may napaprocess na para sa'yo okay what ano ba yung ginagawa ng travel agent first is of course we have to determine whether the ticket is refundable or not. So, sasabihin na namin kagad, sir, hindi po pwede ma-refund or ma-refund na siya. Okay. In case na hindi siya pwede ma-refund, edi, gagamitin na natin lahat ng options na pwede natin gawin para magamit or hindi masayang yung value ng ticket mo. So, pwede natin i-rebook, i-reroute, or i-reissue, mga ganun. So, pwede natin gawin yon. Now, kung refundable naman siya, compute na natin exact amount ng refundable amount mo. So, that is, how the travel agency works. No? So, ganun siya. Okay. So, now, uh, my question to you to end this discussion is, can the travel agency or tour company survive this pandemic? So, now, please write your answer in the comment, dialogue, or remarks. Or if you have some questions, uh, I would gladly hear that. And, of course, that will be a uh, major, baka pwede natin gawa ng other blog for that matter. Okay? So, thank you very much. And if you enjoy this video lecture, you like, comment, and suggest. So, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. So, thank you very much and have a pleasant day. So, thank you po. Maraming salamat.